Now let's talk about evolution of cloud computing. How cloud computing has evolved, right? How cloud computing has evolved. So you can see the cloud computing is uh, the, the concept of cloud computing or the concept of very related concept related to the cloud computing is there from very beginning from 1940s, 1950s, right? Uh, when your uh, first generation of uh, computer system was in the existence. So in early days, let's say in 1940s and uh, uh, late 1930s, when there is, a, there is a, a computing facility. So these computing facilities is only available in the, uh, in the, in the universities or in the, in the big, big industries, right? So when I want to use those technology, could I use it, right? So those facility could I use it? The, the question is that. Uh, so see, this is how your early days computer will look like, right? Uh, so here we use some vacuum cylinder or vacuum, um, uh, what you can say the capacitor, which is going to store one bit of data and then you do the computation and all. So this is a very uh, old, you can say the, the, the computing machine available we have, uh, what we have right now. And uh, it has been evolved uh, from that particular, uh, uh, from that particular era to today. So you can see here, the size of it, uh, it will be around uh, 1800 square feet of uh, space it is taking, right? Uh, this is called ANIC computer and uh, it is invented in 1947 by Williams, uh, Shockway, John uh, Borden, and these are in the bad labs. So it is in the bad labs. In 1950s, these are the scenarios. Uh, where vacuum tubes has been used. So when the transition tran transistor has been evolved, so another way of, uh, as well as the VLSI or the your integrated chips or integrated circuits, the concept of integrated circuit when it come into the picture. So definitely we have another way of uh, looking forward to all this computing. Uh, this is your vacuum tubes where if they can store uh, around one, uh, a bit of data and this is your uh, transistor and then your chips <clears throat> or the microchips uh, VLSI uh, circuits has been evolved right so you see the very first uh, first computer has come up with a vacuum tube then we have the transistor from 1950 to 60 then we have integrated chips or integrated circuits from 1960s to 70s. And then there is a silicon computer chips, which is uh, from around 1970s to till now we are using it, right? So there is a progress in the computing facility that we have, right? So you see in the early days, uh, we have different concepts available. So when we have this uh, first, uh, computer came into the existence, the, the concept of distributed computing, then mainframe, then cluster computing, grid computing, virtualization, web 2.0, service orientation, utilize, utility to computing. All those are the basis of the technology that we see today as a cloud computing technology. Okay. So the compute, uh, cloud computing is uh, all about renting computing service. This idea first came in 1950s. In making cloud computing that uh, is today, five technology played a vital role. These are distributed systems and it's uh, peripherals. And then we have virtualization, web 2.0 service, service orientation and utility computing. So all these are the different technology which has helped us 
to see in today's cloud computing facility. Now this cloud computing, it says that this idea is not a new idea. This idea is very old idea that we, it is available in 1950s when you can see the 1947 around when the first computer has uh, came into the existence. Now, what was the idea? The idea is renting the computing services or renting these computing uh, resources. So generally what will happen is uh, these big computers are the part of only, only the big institutes, okay? Or let's say the big labs or the big companies. Let's say I'm working in IIIT and uh, I want to use this computer. And let's say in IIIT, I don't have any, any computing facility. And let's assume that in IIIT, I don't have that, but let's say in IIT, I have those facilities. So what I'll do, I'll go there, talk to one or two professor who is in charge of that particular computer. And uh, I'll ask them uh, for the time slot where I can use these computer for my computing, uh, computing work. Now I'll go there and at a particular given time, I'll use those computing facility, right? That thing as actually happening in 1950s, 1960s around. Okay, up to actually 1970s. So some, someone have this computing facility and I am using those computing facility either as a courtesy of, uh, let's say the Institute or with individual capacity. So I'll go there and I'll use it. Uh, it means that I am renting that particular uh, computing resources for a period of time. So maybe I'll pay, may not, I'll pay, right? So because it is a government organization, like they are saying like, you are the researcher, you can use it. Let's say if I am not the researcher, I am from industry and I want to use this uh, computing facility, so they will charge it. So let's say if you are using one hour, so you this much of charges you have to pay in that. So that was happening previously. It is not a new concept of uh, renting the computing uh, services. So the renting the computing services are very old till the PCs are available into the existence. So when the, when the first, uh, first PC came, that is your personal computer. So, I'll tear the small uh, firm name called MITS made the first personal computer called Altair, the computer which used Intel Corporation's 8080 microprocessor was developed in 90, 1974. So as you can see, the first personal computer that has come is around 1974. So what I have written here is up to, up to 70s, uh, there are this concept of renting we have used. So when this concept came 1974, this PC came and it has been manufactured uh, in a bulk way by many companies, uh, including Microsoft, uh, Apple, right? Mm, IBM, uh, then we have uh, HP. So all those companies are actually start making the PCs. And now PCs are available to each and every person's desktop. So that that facility was 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 available at that particular time, uh, right? So it is there with my with my table right now, and I I have this in my home, so I don't have to go there, right? 
I don't have to go any of the institute uh, to rent the computing services because this computing services is in my DEX right now. Right. Now you all have these computing facility with you. You all have laptop, you all have desktop. But it's still these laptop and desktop memory is not enough for you. The storage, even though you are having the, the desktop of one terabyte, but this one terabyte is not enough for storing your data in today's world. Yes or no? You, you, you have the RAM, which is your memory size of let's say 8 GB or 16 GB. But for some computing, uh, for sub computing, you need more RAM, right? Uh, you might have the, the CPU of four core, but you need more cores, right? Because it, it is not enough for my computing. It is not enough for developing the, developing the application of today's generation. It is not enough for doing the research, the machine learning, the AI, uh, you know, AI research that I'm doing, which has the data set of let's say uh, 100 GB of data sets available or let's say 1 GB, 2 GB, 10 GB, 20 GB of data sets available. And I want to train my model on those data sets, but I don't have that, that much of RAM available right now which can store all those data, which can do the processing, right? So I required more powerful computers. So it is not like if you have purchased the, 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 uh, the PC, your personal computer, it might be the desktop, it might be the laptop. So it has, let's say 10 terabyte of storage. It might it, it not might have 32 GB of RAM even. So I, I, I can say that the 90% of your uh, PC or desktop doesn't have 30 GB of RAM. You, you just go and check it. You might have 8 GB or maximum 16 GB of RAM, right? You might have this four core of CPU. It is not more than that. But for today's application development, for today's research, uh, we need more computing resources. So what we are doing in 1950s to 1970s is still we have started right now to renting the services or renting the computing services, which is provided by different cloud service providers. So what you do is you take your program, load in there, cloud and run into their cloud with very big computers, with very resourceful computers, right? And uh, that's why it has been picked up. So from 19, uh, 2007, uh, this concept came into the existence uh, in reality because thanks to those uh, a different cons in these different technology which already exists and cloud computing has been come up and uh, we are using it so what i want to tell you is this cloud computing concept is not a old concept the concept is old the concept is uh, not a new concept is very old concept but it it will be, or it, it is right now reality due to different underlying technologies, okay? 